Hello everyone, Kids and Karen, welcome to this new episode of Liar. Uh, and yes, uh, last time we did the scene everyone waited for. It's finally done, and now we're going to continue playing the game. I hope there's no more NSFW, I don't want to censor anything again. Thunder rumbles outside of the window and it's somewhat calming. Being safe and warm in here during what's most likely a small blizzard. This paw is much bigger than my hand, and I feel so safe with it resting there. Wow. Okay, nope. <laughs> yeah. You were amazing, darling. You're calling me darling now. Squeezes my hand a bit, saying this in a mocking tone. <laughs> calling me darling now? I mean, only if you want me to. Mm, I don't know. What would you prefer I call you? Kitska? I mean, other than that... Well... I always like the term love. It's simple and rolls off the tongue. Very well. Mm. He crosses his arms with a bit of a grin. What? What about my lord? God, Lion, you know I hate that. Really? Find it sexy. I giggle at this and roll over on top of him. Fine. You can only call me my lord if you're completely and utterly enamored. He brings his paws up around my arms, slowly moving them up to my shoulders and then to the side of my face. I can feel his paws brushing against my beard slightly as he caresses my cheek. Very well. My lord. He leans forward and presses his lips to mine. I give in and kiss him back, taking the back of his head with my hand. My hands run through his thick mane as he runs his paws up and down my back. I pull away from him and he gasps in pleasure, sitting up. And what will you have me call you? I can see him thinking about it. Pal. Hell no, buddy. No. Good boy. I swear I can see his tail start to wag for just a moment before he reaches around and places his paw on it. Haha. Uh -huh. Very funny. I was thinking something along more along the lines of my night, if that's okay with you. But love works too. I rest my head onto his chest and rub my cheek onto his fur. My night. I say this in a swooning voice, which causes him to laugh. You don't have to say it like that. Uh, oh. There's a knock on the door. Shit. He swings his legs off the, off the bed and runs over to a tall dresser standing up against the wall. Lord Kitska. Hearing this, we both turn our heads towards the door and raise our brows, almost in unison. Lion is in the middle of pulling his pants up around his waist and he has his belt in, the, in his mouth. Bring our voices down to a whisper. How does they know I'm here? Maybe someone sh saw you heading this way? Yeah, but. I think what Adir said earlier and sends a shiver up my spine. Just a moment. I yell us toward the door and I, as I put on my slacks and throw my shirt on without buttoning it. I walk towards the door and open it. It's the servant from earlier. Yes? Lord Kitska, the king wishes to see you in his chambers. Oh, right. I had completely forgotten that he wanted to speak with me later. He left during the ball to take care of some urgent business, I, and I completely forgot myself that he wanted to see me. I was sent to come and get you some time ago, but you were no longer there. I am told that you left the ball with Sir Reed following behind you. He leans in and stares at Lyle standing there shirtless. Yes, I did. There was a slight altercation, but all is well. His nose twitches and he, as he, and he strains up. The king has been waiting a long time. I suggest you find him at once. I'll leave as soon as I can. Very well. I trust you can find your way. Not stupid. His room is right down this hall and up the stairs. I close the door slightly as I talk to them. I'll be there as soon as I can. Good. I close the door softly and lean against it. I guess I should get dressed. 
I'll come with you. Eh, yeah, it's fine. It shouldn't take long, and I'll be back as soon as I'm done. Plus, I want you in that bed when I get back. We can pick up where we left off. Uh, oh, okay. I think I'm gonna go clean up, if that's okay with you. Silly, you don't need my permission. I quickly put my clothes on and head for the door. How does my hair look? Looks as great as ever, love. You sure? Of course. Alright. I'll be back in a few minutes. Hopefully. Love you. Love you too. Aww. Closing the door behind me, I turn and begin to walk down the hall. It's a very long hallway with a lot of doors that most likely lead to other royal apartments. I reach the end of the hallway and there's a large arcway that leads up to a pair of spiral stairs going up. Judging by where I think we are in the castle, I'd suggest that this leads to one of the towers. This feels familiar somehow. A lot of things feel familiar lately. There are two guards standing at the front of the entrance to the stairs. It takes me a moment, but I realize these, that these are the two guards from a while back. The ones that were patrolling the all after Lyle and I had met Kadaj. The bear stands straight with a large bast... a bastard sword? That's a real term? Sure, my bastard sword. Put it to the floor in front of him. The eagle is leaned against the wall with a dull look on his face. I approach the entrance and pause to wait for their approval. Bear looks down at me with a crooked smile. You've kept our king waiting an awfully long time, little lord. I turn and give him an incredulous look before walking forward. They aren't worth my time. Nobody is. Wow. Nobody but him. The king is nice. <laughs> I start to ascend the staircase, and I, as I reach the top, I realize this isn't that large of a climb. There's only about 20 or 30 steps. When I reach the top, there's a common area and a large set of double doors uh, with the Austrian crest in the center, surrounding the symbol of Tigrin. Tigrin. Large bushes filled with flowers adorn the roof of this area, and a big window shines moonlight onto the flowers. Petals fall onto the ground in front of me, and as I step forward, I feel the leaves crunch under my shoes. Raynar loves his plants. I reach doors and pull one of them open. It's a lot less heavy than I thought it would be, and it swings open with ease. One of the first things I notice is a large amount of curtains and drapes. I obscure the moonlight and I can barely see a thing. The room is more like a large hall framed with canopies of white cloth, almost completely obscuring the walls and roof, almost like the ballroom. It's like I just walked into a larger version of a child's blanket fortress. I can see a canopy bed up ahead with large drapes and a small bit of light. Off, off to the right. Headboard is decorated lo with large antlers from form. Of <laughs> the headboard is decorated with lar large antlers formed from silver. I'd say that shells run down my spent for some reason, but I think I, had s I have several reasons. Why is it so dark in here? And where is he? Maybe he got tired of waiting for me and left. I'm not sure if the ball is still going on anymore. Considering it's been a couple hours. Hell, the village's festival ended up much earlier in the day. I wouldn't be surprised if the ball didn't go too late into the night either. Everyone would have to go back to work tomorrow, so I'd understand them wanting to go to sleep early. I can feel myself getting slightly delirious too, and all I can think about is crawling back into Lyle's bed. I snap back to reality and realize my thoughts were trailing off again. I don't want to snoop around this room without even hair, so I turn towards the door and grab the handle. Dot dot dot. No. Something catches my eye right before I leave. This isn't right. There's a framed painting that has fallen to the floor of, 
of one of the dressers. The glass slate on the inside is broken and pieces are scattered across the carpet. Slowly, I walk up to the frame, brushing aside the ivory drapes. Feels like I'm walking through a giant spider, spider web. I kneel down to the floor and slide a bit of the painting out from the, from the frame. This portrait of the royal family, it's small but extremely detailed. A queen is sitting in an elegant chair, wearing an orange and white dress. Something that you would wear outdoors during the spring. On her lap is a small Adrius. He's smiling and holding his mother's hand. His mother's hand. I can't speak. She's grinning down at him and she neither her eyes or a beautiful golden brown, just like her son's. Behind the two of them is Radar, his head on her shoulder, looking down at the two of them. His face is plastered with a large grin which feels weird because I don't think I've seen him smile like that before. I take the photo and set it down on the dresser. As I turn to my left, I notice something even more disturbing. There's large rips through the canopy of the bed. The moonlight shines through them and casts small strips of light onto the neatly made bed. What happened here? I toss a few drapes aside and rush towards the window on the other side of the bed. No. Lightning strikes outside, illuminating and casting a bright light onto the sur surface of every object in the room. I don't have a good feeling about this at all. At first I don't believe what I'm looking at. It's like when you're trying to remember a dream from the night before and it's all blurry and distorted. No. Rina is laying on the ground in a crumpled position. His legs are spread out and sticking out from behind the bed. That's when I notice the blood. Curtains shine with a crimson substance and there's even a few spots where it's been smudged. The front of his body is splattered with a few strands and drops of it and his hooves glisten with scarlet liquid. My legs become weak and I drop to my knees. My hands fall to the blood-stained floor and to catch myself. No. No, no. This was finally going well. I bring my face up to look at him and I see his own. His eyes are wide open and his head is angled towards the window. They look as if they're staring at nothing, with the tear stains streaming down his cheeks. Empty and glazed. I'm not sure if he's completely dead yet or not. The body still looks fresh. His throat has been cut to the bone, blood pulling out onto his chest and then onto the floor beneath him, creating dark puddle. Go! Don't spend your time here! Go, go search for help! <laughs> what are you doing? I think I can also see several stab wounds in his chest, but it could also just be stained. Surprisingly, it doesn't look like blood was sprayed anywhere. I watched most of it slowly seep out of his throat in thick coagulated streams. Someone definitely came from, from the window since... Since, well, he was looking at the window. And uh, there were also guards at the entrance. They could always be... It could always be them. Just... <laughs> it's weird. My eyes start to water, but no tears come out. I'm too shocked by the situation. A foolish thought enters my mind that this might just be one of those nightmares. I imagine waking up in Lyle's arms as he comforts me. It's not going to happen though. This isn't a dream. I'd describe it as a nightmare, but it's not one of those either. No, this is real. Yeah. <laughs> Hire me! Thunder flashes outside again. I can see the reflection of it in his eyes. Who did this? There are guards outside of the entrance to this tower. To my left is a dagger. The blade is dripping with blood as it, and it stains the carpeted floor it rests on. It doesn't look like a special blade. The dagger looks like something you would buy at your average smith. 
I ask trail back up to his cold face, and the reality of the situation comes down upon me like a flood. <laughs> ask for help! I know it's important to, like, take take a look at the scene around you, but still. I look up and notice some of the blood has been dripping off of one of the drapes on onto my coat. There's already a large stain forming. Of course, my body doesn't know what to do. I'm stuck kneeling there on the ground, frozen in fear. I know it's a lot easier to say that as, as I'm not really living that situation, but... Oh, oh, God. My heart is beating out of my chest and a thousand thoughts are running around, running through my head. Yeah, that was... That was very loud for me, t for me too. Questions I so desperately wish to have answered. I try to stand up, but it takes me a moment. My head is splitting open again, and I can barely think. Once I'm on my feet and dry my tears, I take a look around. I have to go and tell someone. The guards! I stumble towards the door, a lot, not looking back. As I'm making my way around the desk, one of my legs gives up and I collapse to the floor. No! All of a sudden, a massive pain shoots up my spine and through my head. Why now? The pain becomes unbearable and I let out a horrible yell of agony. My eyes feel like they are about to fall out of my head. The wrap head opens. Your Majesty? Your s Cuts himself off and I hear him turn to someone behind him as I struggle to get up. Something's wrong. Stay here. At this point I can barely hear the sounds of heavy footsteps over my own heartbeat. I managed to bring myself to a kneeling position. Stop right there! Yeah, I'm guessing he, he, uh, he's gonna try to kill me. Because he thinks I did that. But I didn't. What have you... He looks at me and then down in my hands. And yeah, of course, because I fell in my hands on the blood that he believes it's me. Yes, I, I know. Rushing over to the bed, he's keep blowing behind him. First, I don't hear anything. It's as if the whole world has gone silent. All I can hear is the blood rushing through my veins. Finn. Alert the castle. King Raynor is dead. What? What he wasn't in here for? Go, now. I'll deal with it. Your footsteps run out into the hall and down the stairs. Slowly, I wrench my body around so I'm facing the knight and prepares to raise his sword. You'll die for this, for aid scum. My heart is racing and I find myself unable to get a clear sentence out. I quickly gather myself. He brings his sword down and I swiftly roll to the side. His sword catches in the ground and gets stuck. I'm not all fours and try to break into his print. Can't remember the last time I've done this. I don't have time to revel in my reflexes though. My feet sleep, sleep, slip on the floor but I regain control and bound towards the door. Just as I reach the entryway, the rug gives out and I slip, slamming my forehead into the ground. Everything goes hazy in an act of sheer will. I lift myself up and turn around, trying to regain my vision. The bear has pulled the sword out from the ground and is lumbering towards me. Please, you're making a terrible mis- What is the meaning of this? I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm trying to, to find... Oh, it's it's Lyo said. I thought it was the bearer said that. Lyo rushes into the doorway. His paw placed on the pommel of his dagger, ready to draw. I watch his eyes settle on me, and then he looks up to the bear. Sir Bjorn, lay down your sword this in instant. He killed the king. His eyes contract, and I watch the fear wash over his body. What? He looks behind us at the body laying on the floor. I caught him trying to run away from the scene of the crime. No, it wasn't like that. I was running to... Quiet. Lyle looks down at me. His face is a mixture of shock and anger. He looks up at Bjorn. Lay down your sword! His voice is shaking. This is the first time I've heard him shout and it's terrifying. Bjorn is reluctant, but he lowers his sword. He walks up to me and stands over me for a moment. Lyle, please. I didn't... It wasn't me. 
looks at me with fear and looks up at Bjorn. I can see he's clearly conflicted. My heart is thumping in my chest and I feel like a corner animal. Helen bends down and grabs my arm. He's not gripping me too hard but still lifts me up. Red kids carry you around under arrest for suspicion of crimes against the Kingdom of Lyre and the murder of King Raynor Ocean. Takes a pair of shackles and binds my hands behind me. What? What? Why, why are main characters in furry visual novels always this dumb? It's incredible. <sighs> Happening far beyond the world happens. <laughs> happens in this game too. Is this seriously happening? I know this is unfair, but still. Lyle, you know I didn't do it. He, he can't know that. Bjorn is standing by the king, clearly not happy with this outcome. I'll take him to the dungeons. No, I'll take him. Has the rest of the castle already been alerted? I see him tighten his grip on the pommel of his dagger. Yes, I sent Finn to alert the castle. His grip loosens and I feel him tug on my shackles. As, turn, as we turn away, he whispers in my ear quickly. It's an extremely quiet whisper, but I pick up on it. Trust me. A slight wave of relief washes over me. Well, yeah, but can I trust him? I don't know what he could possibly have planned, but anything is better than being executed on the spot for a crime I didn't commit. He begins to lead me through the door. Bjorn, I need you to stay here and wait for the others to arrive. I'm sure that they will be here soon. Understood. Bjorn lumps over to Raynar's body, getting down on one knee. Leo leads me out into the hallway and he almost breaks into a sprint. He doesn't talk. It just looks straight ahead. After we descend the spiral staircase, he slows his pace a bit. I can't tell if he's angry at me or not. Ah, you'll know I didn't do it, right? More silence. I hear bells start to toll off in the distance. It's a little fo the sender forebonding, forebonding feeling running up my spine. My eyes start to water as if fear takes over. Every part of my body is shaking. We come to a junction in one of the hallways. There's a loud commotion up ahead, so it takes me down another hall. Once we reach the ground floor, we spot Kadaj walking down the hall with two Drizian guards behind him. Lyle keeps moving forward, not paying him any mind. Kitska, what in the name of T Tigrin has happened? Lyle ignores us and keeps walking. All I can do is look at him with a desperate expression. I don't know what I can do right now. I'm still recovering from the shock, but I find it very hard with all the shaking. I think Kadaj realizes something is terribly wrong, so he starts to walk faster towards the commotion, his guards following quickly behind him. We descend further and further down into the castle's lower floors. It becomes colder and colder and I can feel the go goosebumps rising on my skin. Now it takes me down the hall with several cell doors. It goes through the very end and unlocks the door that leads to a large cell. It's terribly dark down here, dark down here, and my eyes don't have time to adjust to the shadows. I can't even see Lyle. Kitska. Yes. I hear him fall to his knees. He's crying, I can tell. He wraps his arms around me and pulls me into a tight hug. While he does this, he also unlocks the restraints around my wrists. He falls to the ground behind me with a thud, landing on something soft. I'm so sorry. I should have went with you from the beginning. It's not your fault, I said. I said that. I couldn't have known that ha would happen, but I said that. It's not his fault. I didn't want you to feel like I was babying you. I should have gone with you, though. It's my job, I should have gone with you. I should have. I grasp his, grasp his face from what I can see in the dark and give him a kiss. You couldn't have known. He gasps and let out a shaky exhale. What happened up there? I don't know. 
I walked into his chambers and the entire place was dark. He wasn't there, so I went to leave, but then saw how trash the room was. After that, that's when I found him. My hand comes up to my mouth as I remember the vivid imagery. I'll try my best to hold myself back from vomiting. Thankfully, I keep it down. I don't know why the pick it was me, because I'm the only suspect. We were found at the scene of a crime. <laughs> why is my character so dumb? Of course they think it's you, you're the only person who was close to him when he was found dead. Nobody else could have gone in there, so it had to be you in their eyes. And why was he dead? I don't know. The body was freshly killed too. You don't actually think I... Of course not. That's not a shaky sigh and hug at me. I had to arrest you. Otherwise you would have been executed on the spot. Why were they going to do that? They, they aren't supposed to, but Bjorn isn't a rule follower. He likes to seek justice in his own way. He pauses and I can feel him shaking. Lyle, you just saved my life. He hugs me tighter and then releases me. I have to spend the night here. Okay, and I'll have to go. This makes my heart sink, but I accept it. Okay, I'm so sorry. You had this all sorted out, don't worry. They'll understand. <laughs> uh, are you sure about that? With that, he gives me a soft kiss on the cheek. He stands and I can hear him lock the door behind me. I love you, Kiska. I'll come back for you. Sir Reed, the prince. Yes, I know! The last noise that I hear other than the shimming bells is the sound of his footsteps as they run off. And now the prince is gonna hate me even more! <laughs> Haven't done anything to him. But you already hated me. That's going to hate me even more because he would think I killed his dad. He doesn't like his dad. Well, he acts like he doesn't like his dad. But I'm sure deep down he still likes his dad. So he's gonna be like, I hate you. Fuck you, Idris. In advance. I don't know what to do. A million thoughts run through my head, but they all can join in the same path. What happens next? Find a stone bench in the dark and lay down on it. Tears stream down the side of my face, but I don't care anymore. All I can do is succumb to the darkness as I pass out. No dreams tonight. Just one word aches through my mind like a bell. Wits. Chapter 7, Day 21. Reality slowly drifts in front of my face. As Genshin, <laughs> the Genshin launcher just popped into my face. Reality slowly drifts in front of my face in a similar way to how a ray of sunshine would cast a red glow on the inside of your eyelids. Every day waking up becomes harder and harder. Sometimes I can't even understand if this is a normal thing or if I'm just weak. I never was a morning person. Slowly, each of my five senses come back to me. I immediately remember who I am, where I am, and why I'm here. Usually when I wake up in a newer and unfamiliar place, I'm struck with a bit of confusion before realizing where I am. It's different this time, though. This isn't like waking up in another person's house after spending the night with them. This is different because the events that led to, to it aren't in my dreams. I knew I was going to wake up to this. Images of Raynor's body slumped onto the floor with soulless eyes invade my mind. I try not to think about any of that yet as I'm not fully awake. I strain my eyes open wider and wipe the feeling of dry tears from my face. The stone bench that I'm laying down on is cold and smooth. Painfully, I sit up and look around. What I assumed to be a sack that I was lying on my head on was actually a pillow made from straw and wrapped cloth. There's a large tarp bundled up at the end of the bench, which I guess is supposed to be a blanket. I wasn't too cool last night, but I wish I had known that it was there. This cell wouldn't be too bad if the bed wasn't a giant slab of rock. I'm better off sleeping on the floor. The only window is a small hole busted into the wall that's bared off. 
part of. On the other side of the cell door that's locked with heavy chains. Along with that is straw laid over all the floor. And a few puddles of water. The shackles that I wore for a short time last night were laying there in a pile of straw. That's where they must have fallen after Lyle took them off of, of me. I get up from my sitting position and stand, stretching out my legs and arms. My clothes feel dusty and any skin I have exposed feels dry and dirty. My hair feels messy and I shake my head letting it straighten itself before haphazardly tying it tying back again. I don't really care about it looking nice anymore. I would just rather not have any air in my eyes. I'd cut it, but I have a feeling Lyle likes it too much. Lyle. He said he would come back for me, but he didn't say when. Just be patient, please. My patience with you is already very low. Now that I think about it, why hasn't anything happened yet? Shouldn't someone have come down to see me now, good or bad intentions? I sit back down on a slab of stone. My mind seems to be all over the place. I can't decide what to think about. I try to distract myself with other issues, but I thoughts always wander back to the worst place. Raynor is dead. They all think I did it. Except Lyle, of course. <laughs> if that's even true. I'm honestly surprised he doesn't think it's me, though. The body was freshly killed and I was the only one there. If only I could function better under stress. I can't believe this. If I wanted to kill Radar, I probably would have planned it so I'm not sitting there like an idiot. When it happens, and not like, not like an idiot. Shock really took me over there, and I also got another one of those sudden headaches. If I get out of this, I need to get those checked out. Convenient headache. for scenario. <laughs> Whatever they are caused by, it can't be good. Tapping my feet on the ground in front of me, I notice a chair that's been thrown against the wall. Its pieces are scattered all over the floor and look old and rotten. Who could have killed him? Several people come to mind. But when I think about it, I don't know any what any of them are capable of. Nobody reasonable really comes to mind. There is one thing that I am certain of, though. I was framed. Someone has it out for me, and I don't know who. I could sit here and rack my brain for hours, but I soon hear footsteps echoing the damp hall. I don't get up from my seat until I really start to listen to the footsteps. They're extremely familiar. I jump up and run to the cell door. Lyle? Gets close enough so I can see him down the bend of the hall. Gets go. He pushes the door to the cell. There's a look of worry on his face and I can tell he's been having a rough day. He probably has it worse than I do. I then play reach my hand through one of the bars. He gets on his knees and takes it in his paw. I'm sorry, I should have come down sooner. Don't apologize. None of this is your fault. I was on table two, though. Why not? His sad and tired eyes look up at mine, and I can see a I can see a stress. The entire kingdom is in shambles. Rumors are already beginning to spread throughout the town, and everyone thinks that you killed Raynor. It's only a matter of time be before this spreads throughout the rest of the north. I figured that would happen. Has anything worse happened? No, but the worst is yet to come. Everyone is scared, confused, and furious. I and several others were up half the night with Liz trying to wrap our heads around it. Others? Yes. Anyone who was a witness and several other offi officials. Prince joined us halfway through. How is he taking it? Not well. <laughs> the bell started ringing and he locked himself in his room after finding out. That uh, makes sense. He didn't even want to see the body, but to be honest, I wouldn't want to see if it either if I were him. One of the guards told me they could hear sobbing and things being thrown around the room. Oh god. He probably thinks I did it. I wouldn't blame him, but I really don't need more reason for him to hate me right now. 
He joined us about an hour, an hour later. Not before kicking over your chair, of course. Can't imagine that. <laughs> well, he can also be forgiven for losing his temper. Agreed. He had enough stability to contribute to our little debate last night, however. What has been discussed so far? He sits down in front of the cell door and leans his head back against the wall. I'd do the same, finding a nice pile of straws to sit down on. He mostly tried to figure out what we were going to do next. Laying our king to rest was one of the topics. It should be taken care of soon. I still can't believe he's dead. Neither can I. He wants to be buried next to his wife. Behind the gardens. Yeah. How do you know where she's buried? I was taking a walk through the gardens after we visited the village when I happened upon the grave. Radar was there when, you, when we talked for a bit. He came back to my room drunk that night, so I didn't get to tell you. Yeah. He was paying his respects and I caught him in a bit of vulnerable moments. After that we just talked for a bit. He went there every month. Right now they're already making the arrangements to have him buried there. The biggest topic was what this means. Some see this as an act of war, but I doubt that. I feel there's something far more sinister at play. I feel the same way. Given the exchange of ambassadors was proposed by the King of, Ar of Arin, Prince Adrius thinks that you were sent to cause chaos and weaken liar. That's ridiculous! Arin would never dream of starting conflict between the kingdoms. Why would they want to start a war with a liar and dress? That's not what they're thinking. The majority of people see this as an attack on liar from both kingdoms. What? They have reason to suspect that Driss is, part of, is a part of this plot. The Kingdom of Liar has been becoming more and more isolated over the years. The trade has been slowing down and they have suspicions that Eren and Driss are trying to seize control to benefit themselves. At least that's what I heard. I'm not a politician. This doesn't make any sense. Seize control? Improving relations between the kingdoms is a desirable outcome, simply due to the fact that all of the kingdoms would benefit equally. Starting a conflict, let alone for one war, would be detrimental to the entirety of Tigrin. No. I don't think that's what ha what's happening. Neither do I. It just doesn't make any sense. Either way, even though Lord Kadaj was appointed Minister of Foreign Relations, Prince Adrius considers him a political hostage. Nothing too serious has been decided yet, considering Driss is only under suspicion of collusion. I'm sure, sure you haven't been scheming with Kadaj. I know. Trust me, Kiska. I believe you. I can't help but remember the conversation that Kadaj and I had the other day. They fear that Lyre is falling out of touch with the rest of the kingdoms, so it's true. The kingdoms, kingdoms do fear that Lyre is falling out of touch. Even some of the citizens, <laughs> even some of the citizens of Lyre feel this way. But he said his goal was to bring stability, so he couldn't have a hand in this, unless he lied. Could he? I don't remember seeing him before I left the party last night. Thankfully Liz somewhat agrees with me. Really? Yes. She also believes that there is something far more complex going on here. The only bad part is she is still conflicted on whether she thinks you're the one who did it or not. That makes sense, she doesn't really know me. And anything she does know would probably be confusing. Would definitely be confusing. I tried to convince all of them that you were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. That you were framed. What do they think of that? They seem to consider it a possibility. Prince Adrius is currently blinded by hatred, and in the near future I can see him considering it as well. Hopefully. No, it's it's this kingdom now. So I, I don't want him to be mad at me. I doubt that. It's nice to hear that I'm not seen as completely guilty yet. Each moment we continue to talk about this and every second I learn what's happening, I get more and more stressed. Here's another thing. He sits up a bit and leans towards the cell door. 
You have a lot more information considering the scene of the murder. That's what I've been doing most of the time. Was there anything that could prove my innocence? <laughs> of course not. Nothing yet. There has been some very helpful insight. Like what? Our first does a body. He yeah, was stabbed twice in the stomach, once in the chest, and then most likely had his throat slit to finish the job. Radar was most likely caught off guard. His antlers tore through the drapes after getting cut in a struggle. We found flakes of gold str stuck on the cloth next to the rips. They're from the antler that he decorated for the ball. I feel my insides twist around the bed as I recall the image of the room. Yes, that's interesting. But are there any portrait revelations? Yes, there is. Guards confirmed us to us the people who had been in the room around the time before his death. Who else was, the, was there? The guards posted outside of the staircase that leads up the tower to his room confirmed that four people had been in there around that time. One of the guards, Bjorn. Lord Kadaj, you, and of course, Radar. With Bjorn going in and out within the hour. I knew it. What? Kadaj wasn't the party when we left, was he? I don't remember seeing him. I think he and Radar must have slipped out early. Maybe take care of something similar to what he had in mind with me. This is most likely what happened. We questioned him last a little last night, and he said he was handling some important business with Raynor. Official questioning hasn't begun yet, but maybe he knows what happened. Or maybe he lends forward an interest. What? Maybe he had an end in it. His eyes gleam with shock at first, but I see his thoughts and I watch as he considers the possibilities he has already done it before. Even I have to admit it's not something I would want to believe, but given the things he said in the past, it's not far off. He alluded to events going in an undesirable direction after the winter solstice. That all speaks up. It's not impossible. Bjorn is currently giving his full report to Liz, so we'll find out soon, I guess. But yes, it's completely possible for him to have done it, but... It's completely possible for him to have done it in the same way that it's completely possible that I have done it. So, do you think he did it? Like Lyle said, it's possible, but I don't believe so. I think it would be too obvious if it was him who did it. Like, is it, like the only character outside of like Lyle, Adrius, Liz, and um, the I forgot his name, the Doctor. Crow guy. Uh, Adrius would make shit sense. Lyle would make shit sense. I mean, Lyle wasn't in the room anyways. Liz, I don't think that would happen. And like, wh why Kadaj? Like, Kadaj would be the only person left, so if it's him, then it's really not great. I said it's possible, but. I don't want to believe it. Bjorn could have done it too. I was sure no one else was in there that, that night. Positive. Not only do we have Bjorn's brief report, but several can I clean myself and sniffed around the room. But yeah, it would be helpful. I forgot you could do with that. It's funny to imagine Lyle with his nose pressed to the ground, sniffing like a blood hoon. I doubt that's how he did it though. Yes. We only picked up the scent of four people. Those of the people who were noted. Damn. There goes my hopes of it being someone else. There's a long silence before I finally answer his question from before. You asked if I think it's him. Thing is, I don't want it to be. But it definitely could be. I agree. But I thought he didn't trust him. Or at the very least, didn't like him. Some down low in his sitting position. I didn't trust him because I saw him as a man with a motive. Someone who wanted to climb the ranks. That's completely fine. But I never would have imagined he would do something like this. Pinches a part of, the mu of his muzzle between his eyes and runs a paw over his head. I too want to believe that it wasn't him. But only because it would mean dress has nothing to do with this. He lowers his paw and looks at the floor. 
and we leave Bjorn. If it was them, then it would mean it's not a foreign attack, which would make this much more complicated. But I also don't think it could be him. He's always been a beast, but his devotion to the kingdom is unchallenged. I guess it makes sense. Still has to be one of them, unless... What is it? Adrius. What if Adrius? It's not another question, but it's extremely improbable. Especially with the evidence we have so far. <laughs> Don't voice it. What if it was patricide? What? What are you saying? You know what patricide is, right? Of course I know what patricide is. You think Adrius killed his dad? I shrugged my shoulders. It's not an impossibility. He wasn't in the room at the time, though. I know. He was in the village last night. I saw him by the fountain. Now thinks for a moment. Explains what explains why the exit to the tunnel was unlocked. But still, you say it yourself, he wasn't even there. You'd have to be in the same room as someone to have them killed. Even so, we don't know if he was out there the whole night. What motive would he have? Says in a hushed whisper, no hints in his voice. Not everyone needs a motive, but it's easy to figure out. Kids guy. Cuts himself off and thinks for a moment. Don't you think you're being a little biased? No! I mean, you have to consider all possibilities. It's a very improbable one, but it's, it could still be that, but... I really don't know. I really hope it's not Kadaj. Because, f f f for starters, I like Kadaj, so I don't want him to, s to kill a, a character I also like. And second of all, uh, I would be the least, the most obvious answer, I don't, and I don't like it when it's the most obvious answer. Unless it's, unless, like, the real answer is not, is, is, like, too convoluted to be believable. Next time the ground wrinkles his snout. I understand what you're saying. And I know you also don't like him. I know he doesn't like you too. Hell, even I'm not particularly fond of him. Fond of him. If they may have been a bit distant or struck with each other due to stress, but you've only been here a month. You haven't seen their full relationship. He loved his father. And his father loved him. He bites his lip a bit, but continues. Last night he was enraged. He was going through so many emotions and they all felt genuine. And you know I'm a good judge on, the, on these things. I know, I just thought I would throw it out there. I just had this feeling that it might be true. Why? I don't know for sure. He's been saying things to me recently and I have the feeling that he has it out for me. Cross his lip in response to this. And not too long ago, Kadash gave me some advice. Trust my own judgment and rely on what I know. But trust in other people, never as much as I trust myself. Lyle runs a path who is for listening intently. You can just feel in my gut that he has something to do with this. His paws brush up against his knees as he considers it. I don't know, Kitsuka. Maybe you're right, but we should stop throwing around suspects. By that logic, we just suspect the damn servant that saw me half naked last night. Maybe he killed the king and went to go and frame you. He exists and covers himself. That would still be a better outcome than if it was, it was Kadaj. But that doesn't mean he was the one who did it. We have to focus on the solid suspects that we have now. That's our best chance at proving your innocence. Suddenly a sharp pain shoots through my body, straight up to my head. Should we be considering all of our options? My life depends on this. I shot this at him, searing pain taking over. This upsets him and once the pain is gonna instantly regret it. I'm sorry, Lyle. Didn't mean to yell at you, it's just... It's fine, I understand. I know this must be stressful for you. No, it's more than that. I'm just tired of talking about this. I just... I lay back on the plaster at the ceiling. Something's wrong with me. Like what? I'm not sure. Mainly these headaches I've been having, but it's something else too. I feel like things are going so fast. Like I'm in the carriage down the going down a hill and there's no way to stop it. I pause to collect my thoughts knowing I'm about to go on a very large rant. I've always tried to keep a level head. I was trying to become a master of my emotions. Sometimes I slip. Situations become too stressful and nothing prepares you for what happened last night. I froze. It's been happening all the time. I get stressed out and I make impulsive decisions and do stupid things. 
I run my hands through my hair and squint my eyes. The pain's still thumping in my head. Not I'm just... I'm so scared. Shuffles on the ground a bit and then leans forward to saw look on his face. I know how you feel, Kitska. Believe me, I do. Sometimes we try to do our best to be prepared for anything. He looks down at his paw, opening and closing the fingers. But fear gets the better of us. Sometimes it can control us and influence our actions. He looks out a window to le or left with a conflicted expression on his face. Kitska. Do you know the reason why I blame myself for our queen's death? I. Why is he bringing this up? It's because you could have stopped it, right? Yes. He stares off into space for a moment before continuing. When I had my eye cut, I couldn't move. Blood was pouring into my eye and I, I thought the worst had happened. Fear took over and I froze up. He dropped his paw over his eye. My officer tried to shake me and get me up, but I, I lost my footing. I wasn't in the moment. Everything happened so fast and I was scared. His words echo down the corridor. He looks up at me. I hunted me for a long time, Kitsuka. I even approached Raynor about it a few years ago because of the pain. I asked him. I could have been brave in that situation. He gave me some advice. He said you can't be brave unless you are afraid. Along with otherwise you're just reckless, but that's beside the point. He gives a slight smile. Yeah, he's right. You have to stay brave. Fear can't help with that. That he ends his speech. I guess I understand what you're saying. I aimlessly fiddle with the ring on my finger as I take it all in. I'll need to work on that. It's pretty good advice. He was full of good advice. Lyle says this with a sense of pride. You really admired him, didn't you? It was more than just your dedication as a knight. I did. Ever since I started living here, he was like my second father. I was practically raised by him in my teen years. Just tell me if I had time to grieve. Not really. I have to focus on what's going on now. It's what he would want me to do. He would be very proud of you, Lyle. He gives a slight smile. I hope so. I think I'm going to make him even more proud. I'm going to do everything in my part to get you out of here, love. Radar may be dead, but I'm going to continue to follow through the, with the orders he gave me. I will assist you in any way I can. He stands and sticks a paw through the bars. I get up and take it in my own hand. I love you, Lyle. I love you too, Kitsuka. I just hope we're doing this the right thing. You know, by being together. What do you mean? Well, it's just that. I love you, Kitsuka. When you said everything was moving too fast, I wasn't talking about this. And if you can want to slow down, we can. I run my hand over his paw, feeling the pads beneath the glove and running my fingers along his, Lyle. I wouldn't say this is from my experience, but I know one thing about this world. Love happens in all kinds of ways. Sometimes it's slow, other times it's fast. Sometimes, sometimes it's between people who are similar, and sometimes it's between people who are very, very different. I say this as I run my hand across his cheek. Very different for me. It's happening very fast. It happened a very, at a very chaotic time in our lives, but this is the only fast thing in my life that I'm enjoying. With my light in the dark. He leans forward, pressing his snout through the bars, and gives me a kiss on the forehead. You make me so happy, Kitsuka. Next time I come down to here to visit you, I'm going to see about unlocking this door. Maybe I'll even get you better living arrangements, but I don't know if I have control over that. I'd definitely put you in one of the better cells, though. I appreciate everything you've done so far. He gives a slight bashful smile. Speaking of, I should probably be going. I have a lot to do and can't be gone for too long. Oh yes, I'm sure our new king is just itching to order you around. I say this rolling my eyes. Actually, he's still the prince. Really? But is he here? He hasn't been crowned yet. Till then, as the king's advisor, Liz is acting queen. Oh, so that's why she's been handling everything. Yes. This world here has put a heavy burden on our shoulders. It's even worse considering she just she just got back. She's handling it well, though. Responsibility is one of her strength. Grabs a finger on one of the metal bars, collecting dust on the tip of the, his glove before rubbing it off. 
Speaking of them, others might come down to talk to you, ask questions and whatnot. I know you're smart, so play the situation to your strengths. Okay, I'll try. I hope I won't have to like make a choice which will influence the whole game, and if I make a wrong choice and I die, I have to replay this all over again. I won't ever let anyone hurt you. He takes my hand in his large paws and leans closer to the bars, looking into my eyes. Not even the prince. Not even the prince. I'll tell him, listen, you little wretch, he's mine. There's a moment of blissful silence as we just enjoy each other's presence presence before he has to leave. As far as it's best to mind, I feel warmth. It's like whenever he's around, nothing else matters. He pulls away and still holding my hand. I'll be back, love. I always will. He steps away slowly, still trying to hold my hand. My fingertips slide off his glove paw and begins to walk away. I love you, Lyle. There's a pause and I hear him turn around. I love you too, Kitsuka. I'm going to do my best to help you in any way I can. You're already doing so much. After that, I hear him walk off. The sound of his padded feet walking down the hall fades away, and with each step getting quieter, I feel more and more cold. I can't even hear him pass the guard on the way out of the corridor. I, I can't even, sorry, but I can't make out what he says. The air and the weather begins to take over as I begin to feel weak. The sun is already beginning to set, and the temperature is dropping fast. I walk over to the bench and lay down on it, using the blanket as a sort of cushion. Small pains work their way throughout my body and up to my head, be keeping it from worrying about how chilly it is down here. I could probably should have asked Lyle if we could get someone to send a leaf, leaf down here. He probably doesn't want to see me right now, but I'm definitely in need of some medicine. Something to ease the pain. At least until I can figure out what's going on. I just hope it's not, not anything lethal or anything with lasting effects. When did this even start? Only a few weeks ago, I think. I think that only a little over a month ago I was back in Erin. My room was so comfortable and I had my own tower in the castle which overlooked the entire capital and the ocean beyond. I would watch the sunset over the horizon every evening while drinking the finest wine. Sun's gold light would bounce off of the tops of the roofs and cast a gold yellow glow onto the misty air above. It was a pampered life, much better than that of my childhood, but I wasn't very happy. I rest my head on the pillow and close my eyes, trying to think of something other than a situation or the pain my body feels. Back then, every day was the same. I would work for hours every day, and then what? Sometimes I would just sit in my room, reading a book. Other times I would visit the local brothel and try to have a night full of pleasure. Those nights were only full of temporary joy, though. Those men only took pleasure in my company because they were paid to. And at the end of the night, I was left feeling empty. It was only a little over a year ago and I was naive. I still am. In spite of what ha what's happened, I can't help but think being sent here was the best thing to happen to me. For the past month, life has been felt like it was worth living. On the road here, I remin reminisced of the stories. I reminisced on the stories I read and songs I heard on the lands beyond Erin. It made things seem exciting and simple. Songs lie, though. I tend to always do that. There is one thing that I can be correct in my judgment on, however. I've met a gallant knight who loves me for who I am. Someone doesn't want anything from me. All he wants is me, and I love him. But I can't fully rely on him to solve this predicament I'm in, as much as I wish I could. I need to be able to find my own way out of this situation when the time comes. I need to play the smart. I lay there for what it feels like a few more minutes in the night, with my mind jumping between thoughts. The pain in my head isn't going away either, as the time passes faster and faster. In fact, it's getting worse. Having my eyes closed at this point just hurts, so I open them. And I think I'm going to be ending this episode here so thank you guys so much for watching uh this was a very very heavy episode and i'm uh, very confused but this is fine i was very angry at one point but th everything is fine don't worry uh don't forget to leave a like uh, and also drop a comment and yeah I'll subscribe so you can see 
the next episodes of Liar and also my other playthroughs. So yeah, see you guys later.